I'm Pastor Steve of Victory Harbor. Welcome to our service today. May the Lord bless you today. Today's sermon nugget is, Come See a Man. Mary was walking down the path, and you could tell from her countenance that she was so troubled, and it seemed like the weight of the world was on her shoulders, and she was contemplating, why don't the people in the village like me? Why does everybody hate me? Why is everybody shunning me? What have I done that's upset them so much? And she began to reflect back on her life. And she remembered when she was a young teenager, when she was out tending the sheep, and Thomas was t tending the next herd of sheep beside of her, and they sort of got along, and they fell in love, and they got married, and man, everything was good in her life. And all of a sudden, one day, about a year later, Thomas just come in and said, I don't want to be married no more. So he filed for a divorce, got a divorce. Well, she was heartbroken. She didn't know what to do. And then Sam come to the village. Oh, he was handsome, the handsomest man she had ever seen. It was love at first sight. They got married, and that marriage, it lasted three months. Another nasty divorce. She just wasn't doing real good in life, it seemed like. And the women in the village began to shun her because she had been married twice and both of them ended up in a divorce. Then she married Reuben. Now it was going good, but Reuben was, was a zealot. He, he was against the government and their marriage lasted about a year and his life ended by, by a soldier's sword. And sure she is, she's been married three times. One of them's died, two of them has divorced her. She's thinking, man, I've had three marriages. You're, it's just not working for me. Maybe, maybe just, maybe it ain't meant for me to be married. Then she met Ben. Ben was the most gentle and kindest man she had ever saw in her life. And they got married, and for two years their marriage was wonderful. It seemed like it was so full of bliss and peace, and everything was great. Then Ben got sick, and Ben died. She was totally devastated. She didn't know what to do. She'd been married now four times, and none of it had really worked out. Then Zach, she met Zach. She didn't love Zach. Zach didn't love her. They just sort of got married because they was going to use each other, and that marriage just fell apart real quick, and another divorce. Well, now she has given up totally on men. She's given up. Marriage is just not working for her. So David comes into her life and they decide they're just going to shack up. They ain't even going to get married. And she's walking now thinking about all these things as she's going down the path. It seems that all the women in the village are afraid of her. She's a very beautiful woman. She knows that. And the women are afraid that she's going to take their husband away or tempt him away. And she's just saying, why can't people love me for who I am? Why does this always have to end this way? And as she's walking down the path, she's getting close to the well. And she looks up and she sees the well and she sees a man at the well. She said, oh, that's all I need, another man. Then she walks a little bit closer and says, oh, great, it's a Jew. What am I going to do? I'm a Samaritan and here is Jew, is at the well. So she walks up to the well and the man politely gets away from the well and says, I'm thirsty, would you give me some water? And she smart mouthly says, You a Jew are asking me a Samaritan woman for water? And he says to her, if you knew who you were speaking to, you would ask me for living water and you would drink this living water and never thirst again. She said, Give me of this living water that I would never thirst again. He said, go bring your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, you have spoken truly. You have had five husbands and the one you're living with now is not your husband. You're not married. She said, sir, I perceive you are a prophet. And they go on and they talk a little bit longer and they talk about how they worship, she's worshiping wrong. She's supposed to be in Jerusalem worshiping. And they talk about that one day there's a man coming that's going to change everything. 
and they will worship in spirit wherever they're at. Now we're going to the Word of God right now, and this is John 4, 25 through 29. This is ending from the conversation and the story. Now we're getting ready to start right here. The woman said, I know that the Messiah will come. He is the one we call Christ. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. I am that one. Jesus told her, I am now speaking to you. The disciples returned about this time and were surprised to find Jesus talking with a woman. But none of them asked what he wanted or why he was talking to her. The woman left her water jar there and ran back to town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Could this be the Messiah? I want to talk to you a few minutes from the thought of come see a man. You see this woman running into the village and she said, come see a man who's told me everything I ever done. So the people of the village come to Jesus and they heard his words and they believed because they heard his words, not just because of what the woman said, but many lives were changed. People got in relationship with him and it worked good. My thought to you this morning is come see a man. Come see a man who can walk on the water. My God is able to do all things. The disciples were out in a little boat in the middle of a rocking boat and a storm, the storm was terrible. Jesus come walking on the water. Come see this man that can walk on the water. Come see this man that can get in the boat, speak to the storm and calm the storm. I've got news to you. Come see a man that can calm every storm in your life. Everything that's going on, he can calm that storm. Come see a man who can turn water to wine. See, there was a wedding in Cana. And Jesus and the disciples were invited and they ran out of wine. And Jesus' mother talked to him and said, they're out of wine. And Jesus had them to fill the pitcher, the big water pots up with water and draw and give it into the governor of the feast and it was turned into the best wine. See, come see a man that can do things like that. Come see a man who gives sight to the blind as he did Bartimaeus on the way to church through Jericho. Come see a man that can do everything. Come see a man that can cause the deaf to hear the mute to speak. Come see a man who gives strength to the legs of the lame. Come see a man who beats thousands. Come see a man that can do anything. Come see a man that casts out demons. Come see a man. When Jairus' daughter had died, that he goes to Jairus' house, speaks to the little girl, and she rises. Come see a man. When the widow son of the city of Nain had died, he spoke to the young man and said, Rise up! Come see a man who raised Lazarus. Come see a man who can change your life. Come see a man who is coming back for his children that are in relationship with him. Come see a man that can fix everything that's going on in your life right now. If you're not in relationship with him, he's asking you, Come now to Him. I say to you, come see a man that can fix everything that's going wrong in your life. Every little mountain that will turn to a molehill. Every little old valley will fill up. Every deep sea will just be a little stream. If you would only get in relationship, come see this man named Jesus. He wants to change your life. Will you come to Him today? Will you accept Him as your Savior? Let us pray. Father, we just thank you and love you for your, for your goodness, God. I thank you one day, Lord, that I got to see you. I got to meet you. You changed my life. I thank you, Lord, that you changed the lives of my family, my loved ones, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're able. We're looking to your return, and we thank you and love you, Jesus, for everything. I thank you most of all, Lord, for that old rugged cross, that empty tomb, and you're coming back again. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name.
Amen. Thank you for being in our service today. May the Lord bless you this week.